In this lesson, we cover depth of field and bokeh in Redshift for Cinema 4D. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Redshift for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 14 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Depth of field is the depth of the area in the render that is in focus. So for example, in this render, these cubes here are in focus. And as we move away from the camera, our cubes become more and more out of focus. Generally speaking, we have two types of depth of field, narrow depth of field and wide depth of field. Narrow depth of field is when a very small portion of our image is in focus. For example, this render has a narrow depth of field and we have a wide depth of field where a large portion of the image is sharp and in focus. Now, this is our scene. Uh, we have these small cubes. They are about 10 centimeters each. Also, we have this camera 01 and camera 02, but for now, we just focus on this camera 01. And from the top view, you can see where is the camera in the scene. If I select the Redshift camera tag that is applied to this camera 01, you notice we have a tab here called Bokeh, which allow us to control the DOF or depth of field and Bokeh settings per camera. Like the exposure settings, we can control depth of field and Bokeh globally. Let's open up the render view and take a look at the display settings. To open up the display settings, you can actually just press O. Here you see we have a bokeh section. If you have enabled bokeh in the camera that you are currently looking through, this bokeh settings in the render view will only control the bokeh settings for that camera. If you don't enable your bokeh settings per camera or don't look through a camera that has bokeh settings enabled and enable it here in the render view, the bokeh settings will be applied globally. And if we open up the render settings as well and go to the Redshift Post Effects section, you have the same global bokeh settings as well, like the exposure settings. As I like to have control over my depth of field and bokeh uh, on a per camera basis, I'll just use the bokeh tab in the Redshift camera tag that is assigned to my camera. Obviously, we can have per camera control over our bokeh in the render view as well, but let's do it through the camera tag this time. So let's check, override and enable bokeh and depth of field for this camera. The deciding factor on how narrow or wide the depth of field is, is the aperture size of the camera. Under this focus settings section, you notice by default we drive our focus distance and COC radius, which is the strength of the depth of field effect from the camera itself. So if I select my camera object and come to its physical tab, we can use this f-stop value here to control how narrow or shallow the depth of field is. Smaller f-stop means larger aperture size and narrower depth of field, and under the other hand, larger f-stop means smaller aperture size and wider depth of field. Just to simplify this again, the smaller and lower your f-number or f-stop, the narrower or shallower the depth of field, and the larger and higher your f-number, the wider or deeper the depth of field. And don't forget that the f-stop value here doesn't affect the exposure of your render. It just affects the strength of depth of field. So if I change the f-stop to something like 8, we get a fairly wide depth of field for this shot. And if I try something like a 1, we get a much shallower depth of field. And if you still wanted to get shallower, you can manually type in values that are less than one. Let's try something like 0.2 for a very shallow depth of field. We can start increasing the f-stop value to see what we get. And as we use higher f-stop values, we get wider and wider depth of field each time. For now, let's set it to one. The next thing you want to be able to control is the camera's focus distance. Right now, the camera's focus distance is on these four stacked cubes. If I wanted to alter the focus of my camera and focus on the cubes in the back, for example, I can go to the object tab of my camera attributes and start increasing the focus distance to something like 420 centimeters, maybe. Now the cubes in the back are in focus and the cubes that are closer to the camera are out of focus. Or you can pick a focus object if you want your camera to stay focused on a specific object in the scene. 
For now, let's set the focus distance to around 320 centimeters. But the simplest way to set your focus distance is through this click to focus tool in the toolbar. So if I enable it, now I can click on any part or any object that I want to be in full focus interactively. And this will adjust the focus distance for our camera. For now, let's focus on this stacks of cubes. Now let's get back to the Redshift camera tag. Instead of driving both focus distance and COC from the actual camera object, we can drive only the focus distance or nothing. If I change it to focus distance, now we drive the focus distance from the camera and we need to control the strength of the depth of field effect using the COC radius value here. And if I change the drive from camera to none, now we have to define the focus distance right here in the tag using this focus distance value and the strength of the depth of field using the COC radius. I normally drive both of them from my camera itself, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's change the drive from camera to only focus distance to see how this COC radius value works. COC stands for circle of confusion and controls how strong the depth of field effect will be. Smaller values keep a larger range around focus distance in focus, which means more of the image is in focus. Larger values make the effect stronger and only keep a small range around focus distance in focus. So the higher the COC value, the shallower the depth of field. When you use COC instead of f-stop to control the strength of the DOF, the click to focus tool can be used to adjust the COC radius amount as well. And to do that, simply enable the click to focus tool in the render view. Now, if you click once on anything, that thing will be in focus. But if you alt drag, you control the COC radius amount. For now, let's drive our focus distance and COC radius from the camera. Bokeh, if technically defined, is the quality of out of focus or blurry parts of the image, or simply the pattern exhibited in areas of the image that are out of focus. And you can control exactly how it looks in your shot using these power aspect shutter blades. We have aspect ratio to simulate anamorphic lenses. Higher values than one will stretch the defocusing effect and lower values squash it. Let's set it to 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 4, and 6. For now, set it to 1. To talk about these power and shutter blade parameters, I'm going to look through my second camera and also turn on the second dome light. Just make sure the bokeh and DOF is enabled for this camera. And to achieve a very shallow depth of field, let's select the camera itself and set its f-stop to something like 0.5. Now let's get back to our camera tag and talk about this power parameter. Now to code the ducks, you can think of out of focus pixels as blurry disks. The blurrier a pixel is, the larger the disk. The power parameter controls how these disks appear. The default one makes the disk intensity even. Values lower than one make the center of the disks more important than the outer parts. Values greater than one have the opposite effect. They make the outer parts of the disk more important. End of quote. Basically, power biases the transparency of the aperture towards the center center with values less than one or the edge with values bigger than one. So values bigger than one increase the amount of blurring in out of focus areas while values less than one decrease the blur and also values that are greater than one produce this kind of highly thought after ring effect, which is really beautiful. For now, let's set it to one. Blade count controls the number of blades of the polygonal aperture. Zero is considered a circular aperture. Now if I set it to three, we'll have a triangular aperture shape. At four, we get a rectangular aperture shape. And maybe let's try five and six as well to get pentagonal and hexagonal highlights. Set it to three for now. Blade angle allows you to rotate the aperture.
Instead of using only blade count, you can enable this use bokeh image and define your own bokeh pattern. If we want to get the same result as the circular type by using this custom mode, we would have used a white circle that fills a black background. So you can create your own shape on a black background and use it here as the bokeh texture. But you can achieve more advanced effects like chromatic aberration using this image section. For example, let me load this bokeh texture from the text folder that has an octagonal shape with different primary and secondary colors around it. And if I change the normalization mode to unit intensity or white color sum, we start to get this beautiful chromatic aberration effect in the bokeh. If we change the normalization mode to none, which is by default, we get a much dimmer render. And that is because the image we loaded is not perfect. A perfect image to be used as a bokeh texture needs to have exactly the same amount of red, green, and blue pixels, which is almost impossible to draw. So we use Use this normalization mode to normalize the loaded image. Basically, when you do that, Redshift tries to balance out the red, blue, and green pixels of your loaded texture. For now, let's get back to our first camera and enable our first dome light as well. Now let's quickly talk about two other factors that control how shallow or wide the depth of field can be. The first one, which has a huge role, is the scene scale. Basically, the smaller your scene and your objects, the shallower the depth of field and vice versa. So the same f-stop value can result in a much shallower depth of field in a smaller scene. The second one is focal length. And the rule here is the longer the focal length, the shallower the depth of field and vice versa. It's not as as effective or important as the f-stop or the scene scale, but it contributes as well. The reason the IPR is getting clean so fast is because I had NVIDIA Optics denoiser on all the time, which denoises all render in real time. If we disable it, the render will be much noisier at the beginning and it will take more time to be basically cleaned up, but the pixel values will be more accurate. So that is about depth of field and bokeh in Redshift. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.